Hi there, this is Brian McKinney, Pantheon's Agency and Community Training Manager, here to show you New Relic, Pantheon, and Drupal debugging. We've got a clone of Pantheon.io set up with New Relic. This is where you, what you'll see when you first land at a New Relic application dashboard. An application represents an environment, so we'll keep an eye on the top left of the page uh, right now we're at the live environment for this NR Drupal site. The first thing that we'll show is the performance optimization of the team page. If you go back and watch the webinar that Josh Koenig hosted with New Relic, uh, at about 30 minutes in, he discovers this performance problem and then optimizes it in a multi-dev environment. Uh, we see that the views page transaction is, seems to be performing poorly. And here we've got it at uh, 461 milliseconds in the live environment. Anytime you get a transaction over 2,000 milliseconds, you'll see a transaction trace there. Uh, as we do for the views page transaction at the team page. So if I click on that and then click on the trace details tab, we can click on each individual segment and expand it uh, to see uh, how each uh, is performing. Or we can click Expand Performance Problems, uh, and the whole list will expand, uh, showing us where our performance problems are. And we can just look for those shaded in gray. Uh, those are going to be your most time-consuming segments for the transaction. And I can zoom in and look down at the different segments <coughs> of the transaction. Um, I know from experience that the pre-process views view is a problem. Josh Koenig, co-founder of Pantheon, uh, remedied this problem earlier today in his webinar. And I'm going to just pull his uh, fixes in from the team page into the master branch. So while in Git mode, we'll go to the Dev Environments Merge tool, click the merge code. Uh, while that's merging, let's go and check out the transactions here on the Josh K environment. So we click on apps, pick the Josh K environment, and we'll look at just the views page transaction. Right here we have a nice little drop down step function. Uh, I hit that views page there after. Now that the code has been deployed to the dev environment, um, just before the code was deployed, we see um, a couple of visits to that team page, and both of those generated a transaction trace. Any time a transaction exceeds two seconds, uh, it will generate a transaction trace. And now that we have the code deployed out into the dev environment, uh, the views page will show its new performance level. Right here, and we've got that down to 868 milliseconds per request, down from well over two seconds. All right, this next segment will show us the standard Drupal 7 performance optimizations that the site uh, had disabled and how those are reflected in the performance of the site inside of New Relic. A second performance win we can make uh, is to follow the site audit um, feedback on our site. We have not enabled block or page caching. We actually disabled it uh, for the purposes of this demo. All right, here in the dev environment, we are caching now our blocks and our pages, aggregating and compressing our CSS and JavaScript. So these are easy performance wins on any Drupal 7 site. Uh, if site, the status tool is telling you to do this, All right, we've got that caching enabled. Uh, we gave New Relic some more traffic to chew on. Uh, and we see that after that cache enablement there, <coughs> there uh, our performance has improved yet again. Let's take a little uh, closer look here at the transactions. And specifically at node page view, you can see that that cache uh, caching has improved the performance of all of those transactions 
and even the views page transaction has improved as well. So that change actually just disabled page load timing and page view tracking in the New Relic browser product for a lot of our pages in our Drupal 7 site. Uh, next, we're going to show you how to add that back manually. New Relic has some documentation on Drupal specific functionality. Um, explaining how they measure uh, those times for modules, hooks, and views. I encourage you to read this. Uh, one thing to note is that the page load timing paragraph here says that when we are compressing, uh, because Drupal compresses cached pages, uh, and since we selected cached pages for anonymous users, the JavaScript for page load timing uh, is not going to be inserted into the pages for anonymous users, which makes sense. And we'll show you in just a moment how that is going to affect the metrics that we have in the browser tool. So what we want to do is go to the manual instrumentation and the Drupal example here uh, for manually setting up the page load timing. So we're going to call the PHP agent API to generate headers and footers for a Drupal install uh, using the uh, theme that we have. And I'm going to insert that uh, little PHP snippet, so not the whole code block, into uh, my theme and the header and the footer. Uh, insert those two PHP snippets and see. So if I want to look at a specific page, um, I can click on that and then Looking back at the APM transactions, I can see how the transactions there for that specific page are performing and click a link uh, directly back to the APM product uh, to this transaction's specific performance. Next up, we'll look at the performance improvements for our search transactions that come with enabling Solar on the platform. We've also heard some reports about the search function uh, not performing too well. And if we look here, we have the search execute performance. The hook performance for search execute shows that it's uh, not doing too great. So let's add solar. I'm going to click settings and add-ons and enable solar. What we're going to do is add a uh, solar container to all of the environments. I've configured solar in my Drupal site uh, here by reactivating the modules that were there and re-indexing the site in Solar. Ran a few more queries, and now we see that Search Execute uh, performance has improved significantly. And again, of course, I can zoom in on the graph to see only the period of time after uh, reactivating Solar. There we go. And if I want to dig a little deeper, I can look at the databases view. The databases view will show us uh, a list of all of our database operations on the left. And if the, if the operation we're looking for is not present, we can click down here at Show All Database Operations in a table and filter uh, this list, uh, looking for only those operations that include the word index. I can use this data uh, to compare against previous operations that um, where Solar was not present uh, and quantify the performance improvement on the database. The last thing that we'll do is enable Redis and look at the performance gains that we realize when we add Redis uh, to our Drupal 7 site. Now Redis is really most helpful for authenticated traffic. Uh, so what we're going to do is add some nodes without Redis in a multi-dev environment, then enable Redis and uh, configure the settings that PHP snippet that we have to have. Uh, and then we're going to add some nodes after and compare the performance. We are enabling Redis. Um, I've also enabled the Redis module there on the Brian environment. I ran a little terminus command um, in order to do that terminus dresh en hyphen y. And here on the Brian environment, I've uh, modified my settings.php. Um, important if you take the snippet out of our Redis doc please add contrib to the path uh, that you're calling from settings.php. If you don't do that, uh, your site will break completely. Redis, we're just going to add some content here on the multi-dev environment. 
uh, now that we've got our content, our Redis module enabled uh, and configured correctly. Um, I'm just going to run node add blog a couple of times. Uh, the first the first time we um, do anything after enabling Redis uh, should be a little bit longer or slower because it needs to uh, warm the cache, if you will. Uh, Redis does not have any keys in it, um, so we need to uh, open up the form and set those set those op options inside of our object cache. And back here at New Relic. Uh, we should see the effects. And now we're looking at the Brian environment at the node add transaction and we see that immediately after the transaction we didn't get that much of a performance improvement but once the cache was warmed uh, we see that nice step down to the right. In order to verify that Redis is working I can uh, open up the uh, all of the segments uh, for the database operations and we see that we've got some Redis gets and sets uh, inside of there. At the databases tool, once we have Redis enabled, we will be able to uh, look at its calls, or in addition to, or uh, sep separate from the MySQL queries. And you notice that st uh, steep peak on the left and the MySQL is not having to uh, perform as much in the node add that I ran on the right. All right, let's merge this code into master. So here we're at the live environment. At the node add transaction, we've got a couple of nodes added there on the left at around 320. And a couple of nodes added uh, immediately uh, before and after the deployment of the Redis um, activation. So if I zoom in to only uh, the last 30 minutes, we'll see that our performance on node add has improved significantly yet again, down to 283 milliseconds per request. And with that, I thank you for watching. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with New Relic application performance monitoring uh, pro version. Uh, we're happy to provide this to all of our users for all of the environments on all of their sites uh, for free here at Pantheon. Please be sure to watch the webinar uh, that's linked in the article below uh, and follow the different links to the documentation that I referenced and used uh, during this demo. Uh, this definitely takes a lot more than what 12 minutes uh, for you to explore and get used to the New Relic interface and all of the amazing data that uh, it provides. I would uh, wish you well and happy coding.